I've had a box of FP4 220 film for nearly a year now and I haven't gone round to testing it out yet. So today, I thought I would try shooting it. 220 is a discontinued film format, exactly the same as medium format, just double the size. Pretty much meaning if I shot square format, I could get 24 exposures instead of 12. Luckily for me, my Yashica 24 was specifically made for 220 film hence the 24 in its name. So I loaded up the film I had and I began planning my shoot. 24 exposures is a lot, especially for medium format. And looking outside, today was going to be a gloomy day. So no luck shooting outside, I was going to have to plan some shoots that I could do from inside my flat. Because this film expired in 1982, I had to adjust the ISO of what I was shooting. Instead of shooting it at box speed, which is 125 ISO, I had to shoot it at ISO 32, which is the lowest I have ever shot. Obviously with an ISO this low, I knew most of my shots were going to have to be on a tripod or long exposures. So I began planning my shoots. For the first few frames, I thought I would take some photos of these flowers and my living room. Now, only one of these images actually came out, which was my fault, I'll explain why later, and it's a really nice image. Maybe a bit too nice. Considering this film is 40 years old, it's quite sharp. Zooming in, it's barely even that grainy. Moving on from flowers, I decided to do some classic self-portraits in a mirror. I love taking self-portraits, whether it's because I'm a narcissist or I just love Vivian Meyer's work so much. It's just something I love doing, especially on my TLR. I took three, these two are mid, but I love this one. I love it so much. At this point in the day, it really had started raining, so I decided to experiment with some compositions in my room looking out into the rain. I don't hate these images, but they're also not that amazing. Certainly weird to see the back of my head in an image I took though. I don't normally see that part of my body. After these, I went back to my living room to experiment with more compositions, settling on this plant in the corner. It was while taking this image, my flatmate Zoe recommended I move the light around while taking a long exposure to kind of play with the lighting in the image. It definitely created a different effect and I think it looks kind of cool. While we were taking these images, we also set up another composition where we both took an image of each other at the same time, and I think it came out pretty cool. The highlights are a bit blown out, like in a lot of these images, but cropping in, it still looks great. Once the weather started clearing up, we decided to head out and I got a few more images. I didn't actually really get many images, I only took two in fact, and they're both all right, but it was while on the way home Zoe took my camera and took this image of me, and for once, I don't hate it. It was definitely around this point in the shoot, it kind of really dawned on me. 24 exposures is a lot, especially for medium format, because I was running out of ideas. This was just going to be a test shoot to test what the film looked like and how to use 220 film. I still got two more rolls to use after this, but I still wanted to make semi good images, I guess. So this is why I decided to get kind of experimental. I set up my camera for a one second exposure and thought I'd try running at the camera and seeing what images I could make. While this process looks extremely stupid, I love how this image came out. The crazy distortion of my body is almost like ghosts moving across a scene. I did another one again and it wasn't as good. And finally for good measure I took a third one and it was even worse. And finally for my last few frames I went back to my room and took these two images. This one is alright, nothing that special, but I absolutely love how my arm looks in this other image. I don't know how I managed to get such a transparent but sharp image with how I moved, but it just looks amazing. Once finishing the roll of film, I took it to uni and went to develop it, and it was while doing this I noticed a vital error. While loading the roll of film, I didn't fully wind it on, thinking these dots were the starting point, not seeing this error right here, which gave me a wonderful two frames of nothing. Also, while at uni, I went into the darkroom and made some prints, making this contact sheet and only really one image, but it was still a fun process. I love printing in the darkroom. So, overall, these images aren't that amazing, but the good ones are are really good. Out of the 24 images I took, these four are just amazing, I love them so much. The fact that this film is 40 years old and is borderline perfect and still in working condition is amazing to me. You especially see with expired medium format film that the backing paper will normally affect the film, but because of this one being 220 it doesn't have a full backing paper, so the film has came out pretty much fine. Obviously there's the downside of shooting at ISO 32, you can't really go handheld unless you're outside in sunlight, but still I don't really know if I'm disappointed by the fact that these aren't really that damaged. Comparing this to some HP5 I have from a similar time period, look how distorted these images are. It's kind of crazy and it's unique and it's interesting, while these, it's just regular film. I've got two more rolls of this film, I don't know what I'm going to shoot with it yet, but I'll be sure to let you know on my Instagram, which you can find under the link in the description. And another thank you for Zoe for helping me with this video, you can also find hard link in the description. Thank you for watching, and Matt out.